coalition of players, including Brooklyn Nets all-star Kyrie Irving and the Los Angeles Lakers' Avery Bradley, believe they have a responsibility to take on a leading role in exploring answers and solutions for fellow players. The group believes to be justifiably reluctant to speak for themselves, sources have told ESPN. The coalition of players delivered a statement to ESPN on Monday describing its thoughts and processes and motivations. Quote, as an oppressed community, we are going on 500 plus years of being systematically targeted, used for our intellectual property talent, and also still being killed by the very people that are supposed to protect and serve us. We have had enough. We are combating the issues that matter most. We will not accept the racial injustices that continue to be ignored in our communities. We will not be kept in the dark when it comes to our health and well-being. We will not ignore the financial motivations, expectations that have prevented us historically from making sound decisions. Commissioner Adam Silver, Blazers guard Dame Lillard provided their thoughts last night. Take a listen. I can only say it may not be for everyone. I mean, it will entail enormous sacrifice on behalf of those players and, and for everyone involved, the coaches, the referees. Listen, it's not an ideal situation. We're, we're trying to find a way to our own normal in the middle of a pandemic and now with enormous social unrest in the country. And so as, as we work through these issues, I can understand how some players may feel that it's not for them. If a player chooses not to come, it's not a breach of his contract, we accept that. Well, I think two things. I think, first of all, with the pandemic that we've been in over you know the course of a few months, um, I think basketball um, would have been great for that or will be great for that because it'll be us getting back to um, somewhat normalcy, you know, of um, having our athletes on TV playing, doing what we do. But I think as far as the racial injustice, I think that's where um, a lot of the struggle is for a lot of athletes. And a lot of our hearts are with our people. You know, our, our mind is with our people. And um, we feel like we should be a part of that. You know, we should be a part of that, that fight. But I think a lot of guys in the league have a point. You know, I think Kyrie and Dwight have a point. Um, you know, so I understand it all. All right, that was Dame Lillard. There's a great piece interview with him on Vanity Fair's website. I encourage you guys to check that out. Stephen A., I will start with you. Does this change your opinion now getting more detail from the Players Coalition with the statement? Not at all. Not one bit. And I would say to you, Molly and Max, it's because as far as I'm concerned, I didn't get more details from Kyrie Irving. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, what, what was he specific about in terms of what uh, in terms of mobilization, in terms of galvanizing folks to a direct and specific goal? What exactly is that? Because I didn't hear it. That's number one. Number two, I would like to remind everybody that Kyrie Irving is on the executive committee of the NBA Players Association. OK, excuse me. Chris Paul is the president. Do you disagree with Chris Paul? Did you tell Chris Paul that when you had these calls with 80 plus people? Uh, did you inform Chris Paul of what your feelings were and what you were going to say before you said it? Did you even know he was going to be on the damn call? These are issues now that, that, that need to be broached because the commissioner, Adam Silver, told Greeny last night he's been communicating with the leadership for the Players Association. That includes the executive committee. So where the hell has Kyrie Irving been? Number three, I'm watching uh, uh, Dwight Howard, good brother, watched him on Don Lemon's show on CNN last night. Okay, we all know that Don Lemon's been doing a good job in terms of what he's been bringing to the forefront, and we applaud him for that. But in the end, when you look at what Dwight Howard had to say, I, don't, I didn't hear anything of substance that he said. And that gets to a bigger issue here, Max. Let me tell you something. When I look at this and I think about everybody sitting there, you know, attacking on social media, going off about money, money, money. That's what it's always about. You're damn right it is. You're damn right it is. Let's stop the games. The Russell Westbrook is putting forth a docuseries based on the 1921 riots in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Why is that such a significant thing? An entire community, an affluent black community was ravaged. Nearly 300 people died. In excess of $32 million in, in, in damage was done. That's what they, you know, man, you know that, that, that's basically what they equated it to being. You know, black businesses were flourishing. This is before integration now, okay? Not once it was diluted, not once black 
black issues and, and, and black prominence was diluted to a significant degree because of integration, some would argue. This is at a time when that wasn't the case and black folks were thriving and their communities were destroyed. Why is Russell Westbrook bringing attention to that? Why is LeBron James folks show, planning on showing up on Juneteenth and addressing issues there for voting rights and what have you? You know why? Because people were flourishing economically. Every single black leader in the history of this nation has preached about the importance of economic empowerment. And here we have a bunch of brothers that are economically empowered and are talking about giving it up. For what exactly? When that economic empowerment is what can address the very issues that we're talking about. Dr. Fauci is on the record saying that the safest environment and the NBA has the safest plan right now because guys would be in a bubble. They wouldn't be traveling, et cetera, et cetera. So you know that safety is something that's being addressed. You've got the commissioner who's been very progressive in his thinking that's willing to help in any way he can. You've got leaders like CP3 and LeBron James that have been putting their money and their efforts where their mouth is along with a bevy, a majority of those players. And if you decide not to play and the players were to listen to Kyrie Irving, were to listen to the White Howard, who, by the way, are supported by Kevin Durant and other players. If they were to listen to that kind of stuff, then essentially what you're talking about is the season being canceled, the CBA that you just agreed to being ripped up, essentially a whole everybody being free agents for all intent and purposes, and with the owners coming to the table, having accrued those losses, projecting future losses, and then, oh my goodness, they're going to look for you to stomach some of those losses, which means you're taking money out of your own pocket you will never, ever rec rec you know, re re receive or recruit. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You get with the commissioner. You get with power brokers in the white community. I'm looking at Mars, the Mars Court Max. They got Snickers and Skittles and all of this other stuff generating over $30 billion a year in profits. How about going to them and saying, excuse me, what have you done for the, uh, the African-American community? 